Good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in today to our radio program, Love for the Truth, put on by the Davison Church of Christ. We're located on Lapeer Road in Davison, right next to Lucky Steakhouse. My name is Travis Toy, and I'm a part-time preacher here at the Davison Church of Christ and a full-time Christian. We're very glad that you're with us today. I have a question to ask you today, and it's what I would like to talk about for our lesson. Do you have a love for the truth? Do you love the truth? You see, we we chose the, this title for our radio program long ago to be Love for the Truth because we want to show the community around us that the truth is really all that matters when it comes to religion. What God says about a topic should be the end of the discussion for that topic. The answers that God gives are not only opinions, they're not opinions at all as a matter of fact, but they are the only answers. See, Jesus said in John 8, 32, the famous verse, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So it's the words that are true that are going to set us free spiritually, not words that are false. Therefore, we need to love the truth. We need to love the right answers because those answers are the only answers that can lead us to the Father in heaven. Because Jesus, the Son of God, brought us those answers. He brought us the right answers and what we need to do. You know, sometimes people act like the scriptures are really able to be taken 40 different ways. Any way you want to take them. And they say that it's, it's ignorant and it's wrong to believe that God has only given one answer for certain things. Is that how you interpret Scripture? Let me ask you a question as an example. How many days was Jesus in the tomb before he was risen? What would you say to that question? Well, you'd probably say, uh, the Bible says that he was in the tomb for three days. And that answer would be 100% correct. Because that is the answer that the Bible gives for that question. If you have a problem with that answer, then... I'm sorry, but you have a problem with God's answer for that question. People don't like to hear this, but if you give another answer for that question, you say something like, oh, Jesus was in the tomb for four days. Then again, I'm very sorry, but that's the wrong answer. That's not the truth, because that's not what the Bible says. Did you know that there are right answers and there are wrong answers when it comes to Christianity? It's funny, really, that we have to explain this in today's world, because We apply this literally to every other subject matter. And I ask you, why not Christianity? Take the subject of math, for example. If I stand up and I say 2 plus 2 equals 4, well, that that is the right answer. And can I ask you this question? Isn't that the only answer to that question? You know, if your young child is in school and they write down on their test that 2 plus 2 equals 5, Are you going to be upset if the teacher marks that wrong? I don't believe that you would be upset. I believe you would agree with that teacher that 2 plus 2 does not equal 5, and you'll explain to your child, well, honey, yes, that was the wrong answer. Here's why that's the wrong answer. Now, even in the field of music, this applies. If I say to you, perform for me a C chord, and you perform a D chord, well, you've given me the wrong answer. This applies, you see, to every subject ans- every subject matter, that there are right answers and there are, in fact, wrong answers. Why is it then that when we get to the topic of the Bible and what the Bible says about things, does the religious world like ever, act like every answer can be that right answer? That there are really no absolutes when it comes to the Bible. Well, you see, the truth is that the Bible either says it or it does not say it. And it is very possible to give a wrong answer in this life when it comes to religion. So let me give you some examples. You know, I'll, I'll ask you this, this very simple Bible question. Can I make it to heaven if I don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes or no? Well, we'd say, no, the, the Bible doesn't say that. John eight twenty four, Jesus says, if you do not believe that I am he... You will die in your sins. Therefore, there is only one answer to that question. There are not two answers to that question. There is one answer. You cannot get to heaven 
without choosing to believe in Jesus Christ. And we all agree on that, who claim to be Christians. You have to believe in Jesus. But let me tell you this, the world is making a very grave mistake in interpreting scriptures when they say things like this. Well, you know, Jesus said we need to believe in him so that we can have eternal life. Therefore, that's all we need to do. But friends, is that the right answer? Did Jesus ever say that that is all we need to do for salvation, is believe in him? Certainly Jesus said we need to believe in him. But did Jesus stop there? Because if Jesus didn't stop there, then we don't need to stop there either. We can't change the Lord's answers for our salvation. You see, if I'm a child and my mom says to me, Honey, I want you to make your bed. I also want you to pick up the toys from off the floor. I'll ask you, you know, wouldn't I be in trouble if I only made my bed and I ignored my mom's other directions to pick up the toys from off the floor? Well, certainly. That's the way that instructions work. And here people say that Jesus, how he mentions belief in certain spots only, therefore it's the only requirement. In our example that we gave about the mom giving instructions to the child, what would that mom say if the child was like, well, mom, I made my bed like I was supposed to. Why are you upset with me? She'd surely say, well, honey, it's because I didn't just tell you to make your bed. I also told you a second thing, to pick up your toys from off the floor. Then you didn't do that. Therefore, that's why I'm upset with you. And yet people still believe that belief in Christ is the only requirement because Jesus mentions belief in certain spots. Of course we have to believe. But did you know that I can believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world and not heed to another word that he says? Did you know that that is possible? I can continue living my life as a murderer, killing people in my free time, but hey, I believe in Jesus. I'm going to heaven. That's what people say. It reminds me of how the book of James talks about how the demons also believe and they tremble. And we know that those demons aren't going to heaven, so I ask you this question. Must not someone also repent for salvation? Now keep in mind our logic that we've been talking about. The Bible either says you do have to repent, or the Bible says you don't have to repent. Well, you see, the Bible says you do have to repent in order to be saved. Luke 13, 3, listen to what Jesus says. Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. So what if I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior, but I never repent? Well, according to Jesus' instructions for my salvation, I would be lost. One must believe and repent in order to be saved. Because why? Jesus said both. He didn't just say one, he said both. Paul says in, in Romans chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, talking about repentance, he says, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who have died to sin live any longer in it? My friends, we have to understand, you can't just believe in Jesus and then go and live your life for the devil and expect Jesus to let you into heaven. Paul says further about repentance in Romans chapter 12 and verse, verses 1 and following that we need to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, and that we are not to be conformed to this world, but instead we must be transformed by the renewing of our minds. See, if I'm not changing at all, and I'm still living in sin without restriction, then I have not repented of my sins. I've not followed Christ's command to repent. If I continue living in a state of constant sin, I would need to stop that in order to obey Christ's command to repent. The Bible doesn't teach that you'll be perfect. By no means does it teach that. But it certainly commands you to be faithful. And there is a big difference between faithful and perfect. We, we need to be walking in the light, as First John says. It commands us to turn away from our sin and not live in it any longer. So just as surely as Jesus says that we must believe in him, that same Jesus also said we must repent or our sins will not be forgiven of us. We must repent also. Do not allow yourselves to be lied to anymore. I want you to think about it. Do you really think that Jesus 
doesn't care at all about how we live our lives? Do you think he died so that we can sin all that we want? And really, do you think that the Father up in heaven who hates sin would send his Son to die for the world only to allow us to continue living a life of constant sin? Or does it make more sense that the Father sent his Son into the world to turn people away from their sin? Certainly, Jesus said, unless you do repent, you will all likewise perish. And I'll ask you the same question again. Did Jesus stop there for his conditions for salvation? Doesn't Jesus mention something about confession in his name? Well, certainly, Matthew 10, 32 and 33, Jesus says this statement. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. So this is very plain language and simple language. Jesus says, if you confess me, I'll confess you before my Father. And if you deny me, then I will deny you before my Father. Well, is it, is it possible for us to believe in Jesus, but still deny him? Well, certainly. So, what's the answer to our question here? What if I don't confess Christ before men? Can I be saved without ever confessing his name? The verse holds the answer. If you don't confess me before men then I won't confess you before my Father and his holy angels. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, Paul talks about how Timothy confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. And you can read about the conversion of the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8, how he spoke with his words that very confession in verse 37. And he said, I do believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Romans 10.10 says, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto righteous, unto salvation. I'm sorry. The Bible has laid out a plan for us and for your salvation. And you see, the world is not following it the way Jesus brought it. They say, all you have to do here is step one and it's yours. Well, I'm here to tell you that that is not the case. Jesus didn't stop at belief in his name. Jesus says, salvation is free. All you have to do is this. First off, you do need to believe that I am the Christ or you will die in your sins. Secondly, you need to repent of your sins. That means change your life to line up to my standard. Then you thirdly need to confess me before men, Jesus said. And lastly, we do not want to forget the last step which puts us into Christ. Galatians chapter 3. We need to be baptized in water and we will be saved. Now, we do not preach baptism alone, but baptism accompanied with, with all of these preceding things, belief, repentance, and confession. Well, Jesus, why, why, why do I have to be baptized in water? Really? I have to get wet? Why do I have to do that? Well, because the Lord said so. It's as simple as that, because he said so. And that's what we bring, what we're, we're talking about today, is Jesus either said you do have to be baptized in order to be saved, or he did not say that. Well, the truth is clear. He did say that. Anyone who denies that Jesus said you must be baptized in order to be saved is denying very plain language of many biblical passages, and we're not showing love for the truth. I know what they're teaching you out there. Oh, baptism's a work. You can't be saved by any requirement on our part. Well, we're saved by belief, repentance, confession, and now he mentions baptism. Does Jesus say it or not? Listen, listen to Mark sixteen fifteen and 16. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. John 3, 5, Jesus says, Unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Why did, he, why did Jesus set it up that way? I don't know. But that's the conditions for his grace. That's what he has told us to do. Baptism is the point which, which washes away the sins. Everything else is leading up to that. Acts 22.16 says baptism washes away sins. 1 Peter 3.21 says that baptism saves us. And lastly, we, we must remain faithful unto death. Uh, we're out of time today, but we would love to help you with this, with this Bible question. Feel free to call us at 810 653 5700. Thank you and have a great day.